My day is no different than anybody else. I get up, I usually get about 6.15 in the morning, uh, take a shower, get ready, get the kids up, get Sheila up, <laughs> and, then, uh, and then we start the day. We usually get in, you know, by eight, and we'll have a senior staff meeting, and that could last anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. Right now, as opposed to infrastructure. Well, when I come to work, I walk up those uh, nine floors, come into the office, and I'm still kind of in awe of what the job is and what it means. From day one, January 1st, 2010, when we all got together officially as a new government we had to set guideposts for the whole administration. First for us on a daily basis of what we stand for, but also for the entire administration and the public to know what we're gonna do over the next four years. And we label those the, the three, three P's. P's. The first thing, and that's the main reason why I ran, was protecting taxpayers. In this county, as you know, we have the moniker, unfortunately, of being the highest tax county in America. We came in and we had major deficits. So we attacked the budget and in a reasonable, rational way, started downsizing a little bit and living within our means. Our first year we came in and we inherited a budget that was $1.8 billion. Uh, three years later we're at $1.7 billion. We made sure that each department reorganized in the right way, still delivering services that are needed, letting the people know exactly what we do as a government, and making sure that taxes didn't go up. Every day is different. You think you're gonna have a sort of a routine day just of some meetings and then the phone rings and it just makes it challenging every day given the day-to-day -day budget pressures we have, the unforeseen circumstances that always arise, the political pressures, the, the, the public pressures, and then personally, you know, having to balance all that out with my family life. A lot of volunteers ready to sign up, a lot of organizations ready to receive those volunteers. It's important for the public to understand what we actually do. But we do a lot of things that the public may not be aware of because they don't potentially see them. Our health department provides inspections to restaurants so you have food that's healthy to eat. Provides immunizations to children around the county. We have an amazing park system. Westchester County Police. You're probably walking on top of pipes that carry water, clean water. You walk on, on pipes that carry sewage and all of that is part of county government and what we do. Department of Social Services provides for the most needy among us. And we're proud of what we do, and I think we do it very well. When Hurricane Sandy hit, we immediately mobilized. The Emergency Operations Center was fully staffed up, and we were helping the municipalities with resources and information that could help them get through the disaster. Eight and midnight, it was, it was really bad. Uh, we actually had to pull the county cops off the road for a period of time to have them shelter in place, as did state police. We're getting weather updates, we were getting traffic updates, flood watches, all of the information that we need to react and to plan. It really was important to have that sort of central intake place, and that's really what the Emergency Operations Center was. Not just to deal with our own problems, but to also troubleshoot and assist the municipalities directly. 
Many people may not realize that tourism added $1.7 billion to the economy of Westchester last year. The other aspect is promoting economic development, growing the economy in our own little world. We have about a million people who are here, most of whom are willing and ready to go to work. They may not want to go to work in New York City, they may want to work right where they live. We've reinvigorated the Industrial Development Agency. We've started a local development corporation which allows nonprofits such as hospitals, uh, schools to take advantage of low interest tax free bonds, and that'll grow the economy as well. One of the things I worry about, and I hear it all the time too, is seniors increasingly are only seeing their grandchildren on the holidays because these 20 year olds are now moving away and they would love to live here but unfortunately have had to move not by their choice but have had to move because they can't afford it here or the jobs weren't here uh, but by opening the door to businesses by trying to hold the line on taxes that's what's going to keep people from moving away and that's the difficulty of this job but that's the biggest challenge and that's what I want to succeed at is putting us on a path that not only helps today but will help 10, 20 years down the road and hopefully we'll be able to create uh, the economic engine that's going to make it very inviting for people to stay here, to find a great job and to raise their own family here. One of the biggest challenges we have right now is our costs are exploding every year. We've got these unfunded mandates, demands by the state to what we have to do for services with no money attached to it or little money attached to it. We've got to make up that difference. There are nine mandates alone that eat up 85 cents of every dollar you send to the county in your property tax. So you've got booming expenses that are locked in like contracts for labor costs, our pension system in New York State is just out of control, yet we have to pay that. Medicaid costs, yes, we need to provide for those who are the poorest of the poor who need medical attention. We have to do that. We're not even questioning that. But what we're questioning is why is it costing so much? When costs are unsustainable, you go after the costs. You don't just add more money to it and let the problem fester. So it's important that we provide services but take a real sharp look at everything that we're doing. It was trying to reach a compromise to uh, get a budget crafted that we could all live with, that is balanced, that does not raise taxes. The budget is perhaps one of the most important things we do every year. Within that $1.7 billion, we could talk about everything, and we did. Uh, we reached compromises. Uh, sometimes the process is messy, it's loud, and ultimately, though, for two years in a row, we've had bipartisan budgets, and that was important. I think that was significant. And as we go forward, we may not agree on everything in the budget. I certainly didn't. Uh, but we reached a plan that we could all live with that, again, did not raise taxes, lived within our means, and secured the AAA credit rating. And within that, provided the services that the public needs and sometimes even wants. There's a million people in this county, all with different needs. It's been an opportunity to put into place the things I talked about to the people of this county when I ran in 2009, and that is to try to make it a little more affordable to live here, uh, to find a job here in Westchester County so we can grow the economy that way, to make businesses want to come here or expand, to hold the line on taxes so people of all ages could live in this county. It's where I grew up, it's where I live, it's where I, my wife and I are raising our kids. And the decisions that I make in this office are important and they affect people's lives. And so every day I try to make the right decision and to not so much think about me and now, but the we and later.